Hello, in this video we're going to see how to detect lip and eyelid contours on the images from the HMC using Track. Let's start with loading our sequence. Since we only need to perform detection on one of the cameras, let's load the sequence from the top camera. So here's our sequence. Let's go to the Detection tab and click the Detection Parameters button. As our sequence is captured with the cameras on the helmet, we need to select HMC as the detection method. This defines which neural net is going to be used for the initial detection. Now we can click OK. Then let's go and click Detect. This process is going to take some time, so let me speed up the video. All right, now let's switch to the first tab and click Cache Selected Range for faster playback. So now, if we go back and if we scroll the sequence, you can see the results of the neural net detection. It's not perfect, but it's a pretty good initialization for the next step. So, now what we need to do is find a neutral frame on the sequence. It's going to be our last frame. Let's create a neutral training frame here. In this dialog, we should specify how many semantic points we're going to use. In our case, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 semantic points. So we can go here and set 7. Let's click OK. I'm going to click Edit. And now we can edit our neutral expression. The neutral frame is super important. So we need to very carefully move every semantic point to its corresponding marker. First you need to set these contours exactly on the contours of the lips. The painted markers are a great guide on where to put the semantic points, but make sure to always put the semantic points on the contours of the lips even if a corresponding marker is set aside from the contour. So this is how we get our outer lip contours, and then let's move on to the interior contours. In this case, we can click Control Up to automatically fit our lower contour to the top curve. So this is our neutral expression. Let's click this button to exit edit mode. Now, let's pick a short subsequence to work with. I think we can take the beginning of the sequence that contains a few extreme expressions. So let's limit our range to 200 frames. Well, now what we can do is select a few of the most distinctive frames. For example, this is a great extreme expression. Note that in this combo box we have a list of segments, so for now we're going to work with lip contours, but we can process the rest of the contours following the same principle. So for the lips, let's create another training frame, and let's switch to edit mode. And now let's annotate this frame too. This one is a pretty complex expression. All right, now let's move on to the inner contour. I suggest creating reasonably smooth contours. No need to outline every small feature. Just try to fit the shape in general. So with this done, we can now switch to the neutral expression by holding the N key and then compare our current annotation with the neutral expression and do a few adjustments accordingly.
All right. That looks good. Let's click Edit again to exit the edit mode. Then let's find another complex expression like this one. And create another training frame here. Let's click Create. And then click E to edit it. And let's annotate another training frame. Let me speed up the video this time. OK, now let's switch to the neutral expression and compare our results. This one looks good. So let's click Escape. Then let's move on to one of the most complex expressions, like this one. And let's create a new training frame here. I'm going to click E, and let's fix it. It's very important to put points consistently, even if you don't see the corresponding markers. All right, now let's switch to the neutral expression again and check if our annotation is consistent with the neutral one. Let's click Edit. And now with this done, let's click Compute. Let's wait for some time for the computation to finish. Computation looks good. Let's scroll through our sequence to see how it works. So, it works well around the major expressions. And now we need to find some expressions that don't work. For example, I don't like the shape of this one. To fix it, let's go here and create another training frame. And edit it. You can see the points are already close to their proper positions, but we just need some minor adjustments. Now let's move on to the interior contours. And then we can click Control up to stick the low contour to the upper curve. Then we go to the neutral expression again to see if everything works well. It looks pretty good now. So we can exit this mode 
and click Compute again to see the effect of adding this training frame. OK, now let's see how it works. This is pretty good. Don't worry if the lower contour becomes higher than the upper one, as we have a tool to fix it later. This one is also pretty good. I don't like this expression, so let's take a moment to correct it. Let's create a training frame and quickly edit this expression. I'll speed up the video for you. OK, so this one looks good to me. Let's switch to the neutral expression. Make sure that our annotation is consistent, especially around the markers. All right. Now let's click Escape and compute the sequence again. Good. Let's scroll through the sequence. Now we have one bad frame over here. And one bad frame at the very end. Note that this misalignment only occurs in a single frame. I'm going to fix it using a small interpolation trick. I'm going to set my active range here by clicking the opening angle bracket key. Then I move a couple of frames to the right and click the closing angle bracket key. Then what I can do is click Interpolate. What it does is it interpolates the contours between the beginning and the end of the active range and uses this interpolated contour as an initialization for the solver. Now I can go back and see that my problem is solved. And then we go back to the last frame of the sequence. All we need to do is create another training frame. This one is really easy to fix. OK, this one looks pretty consistent to me. Let's click Edit again and click Compute. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to select the active range to cover the entire sequence. Now let's click Compute. All right, now let's scroll through the entire sequence. Let me zoom out a bit. Let's move through the entire sequence and see if everything works well. All right, and as a final step, we can go to the Filter tab and we can click the Filter button and that will automatically resolve the lip in sections. Also, this filtering adds a sticky lips effect, as you may see over here. And there we go.
Now, let me skip the part of the video where I trained frames for the rest of the sequence and come back to you when everything is finished. Alright, here's our final result for the entire sequence. It looks pretty good now. I also detected the other contours, specifically for the left eye contour, and also for the right eye contour as well. And now all that's left to do is go to the filter tab and run the filter for the entire sequence. Then we need to go to export and click the export button. Let's go to the folder called take01. Let's create a new folder and call it detection. Then let's click select folder. And now all our detections have been exported to this folder. So that's it for this tutorial. In the next videos you will see how we use this result in the further steps of the processing.